Hello everyone, I am Avnish Tyagi. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to tell you what parameters are required for multipod configuration. So let's get started. Multipod configuration high level steps if we are going to divide so we can divide into three uh, major parts. One is access policy for infra L3 out. Second is port fabric setup policy. And third, overlay setup. Access policy for infra L3 out means what? We are going to use external L3 domain in L3 out configuration. So prior to that, we have to create access policy so that when we are going to create our L3 out, we can directly use it. This is one part. Second part, port fabric setup policy. Underneath of that, we will create port setup pool. So we have to give some tab pool regarding the second port because we are going to add a new port into our already uh, created uh, port let's say port 1 and we are going to add port 2 so we have to provide port pool over there right so this is second part third part is overlay setup underneath of that we have to create three things one we have to go to the infra tenant and underneath of un, uh, infra tenant we have to create fabric extension connection policy second ospf interface policy it is going to be used during our l3 out and third thing is l3 out as you are aware it is similar L3 out configuration as we generally create for other tenants. So it is similar for that. So when we are going to create our multi port, so my L3 out is basically created from the spine switches rather than border leaf switches. So this is the only difference uh, from the physical connectivity perspective, but uh, configuration wise it is almost same so we can say that there are three focus area we have to have when we are going to create a, a multipod so now i'm going on the next slide to tell you what parameters you have to collect uh, prior to start the configuration access policy for infra l3 out we have to decide what VLAN we have to take. So Cisco already have recommended that VLAN pool we have to take uh, for the VLAN 4 because this is the only recommended Cisco VLAN. So VLAN pool we have to create. After that we have to create domain, L3 domain, external L3 domain and uh, we have to attach this pool to this domain. After that, we have to create one AEP. So we have to decide what naming convention we have to take, what uh, parameters of all these uh, mentioned items we have to take. So all those you have to decide prior to actual configuration. After that, fourth point is AEP to domain association. As we know that uh, AEP will associate to domain, which we have created in step two or you can say domain also can attach to AEP so you have to create AEP prior to the domain so it is vice and versa so you, you can create in, in which order you want right fifth point is interface policy group this policy is basically going to utilize when we are using the interfaces between the spine and uh, IP and switches so we have to apply interface policy group on that interface so aep which we already have used so we will apply there link policy 
parameter auto negotiation on whether we are using the 40g link or whether we are using 100g link this link policy we will uh, use and auto ne negotiation we will use as a on cdp policy we will use and uh, parameters we will make enable so cdp on lldp on mcp policy on so these five parameters we will use underneath of interface policy group so these are some parameters related with the access policy which you have to decide prior to go into your configuration right? next is port fabric setup policy as i have mentioned this is a second point this one so we have to decide what will be the tap pool for second port so prior to going to configuration you have to decide it and you have to list it down somewhere so that when you are putting the configuration you can utilize it as well it is quite a straightforward and uh, next item is overlay setup overlay setup is basically uh, you are going to set up fabric extension connection policy underneath of this and ospf interface policy and uh, l3 out policy or you can say l3 out so these are the three things you have to configure under infra tenant and these parameters you need prior to actual uh, you can say um, actual doing the configuration so i'm just uh, going to tell you something here so we can take this color here so this is a name name of fabric extension connection policy this is a community community is basically used when you are exchanging the routes right so this routes between the board will carry this community peering peering should be full mesh bgp peering profile password could be anything it is uh, optional if you want to use it you can use otherwise there is no need of it okay next item is port one dp tap dp tap means what you have suppose here to port this is port one this is port two so let's say port one port two and these are spine switches hmm? so from here to here when communication will go so we will make a, a tunnel vx tunnel and end point of this tunnel will utilize a one ip address both end so external tab so this ip is this one one ip we assign as a router id these are the router ids but this is a common for one port external tab external tab okay so this is two ip you have to take generally what we do when we are going to do the configuration we we plan like that we have suppose uh, four port here one two three and four right and uh, all these having suppose two two spines which is huh? so in that case we allocate one big pool example 56 133.4.0 slash 24 
let's say we will allocate this pool this is one requirement so one ip i will give here as a router id another is router id and one is this external this this one like this one ip is this same next ip i will assign from this pool let's say dot one i have assigned here dot two dot three dot four dot five dot six dot seven dot eight nine i have assigned for this external ten if you have four ports so eleven and then twelve so generally we allocate one uh, major subnet slash 24 for this purpose okay next is external uh, routing profile name so it is just name so naming convention you can decide whatever you want and fabric external routing profile subnet what is the meaning of that you have here let's let me clear it first right. so uh, i have here my spine and I have here also a spine. I have here my IP and switches. Those are going to connect these two port. Port one, port two. I'm taking example here only for the one one spine. So here you have given one IP address, right? So one one IP address you have given here and you want that here underneath of this port ISIS protocol is running so here is OSPF so what we are trying to say here we are creating the root map and this root map is saying that whenever any IP from here to here advertised by OSPF it should be redistributed into the ISIS so that everyone can see it underneath like APIC or my leaf switches. Okay. So this is this is the uh, main, main, main point of it. So this is a routing profile subnet. So I told that one subnet I require for this purpose and one uh, subnet I require for this connectivity so major subnet you can take like so so I have already removed some uh, text from this slide so I was talking about that uh, there are two subnet we have to consider one for this purpose and second for this purpose so first one is for the external tab so you consider slash 24 and here also you consider slash 24 so one one ip you can give here ospf interface policy it is straightforward so we can create it easily there is no as such big parameters consideration is required prior to the configuration so you can do it l3 out l3 out for the multiport you have to give name overlay already we know that overlay one this is brf ospf area id zero and ospf area type will be regular ospf area cost will be one and external routed domain which we have already created in my previous uh, slide i have told that this is going to use here so that's why we are creating the access policy above next is uh, configuration uh, those are required right so i told that uh, one ip is required here dot one dot two dot three dot four in in each i i uh, sorry spine switches so these ip are being used as a router id so here we are seeing here 56.133.4.1234. So these are router ID we, we can assign to the spine switches from that pool. And uh, we are going to use uh, another one for the uh, interfaces. 
so this is this is my 56 152 112.0 suppose i have here my spine and here is my spine switch and here my high pn switch so one ip i am giving here so this ip is my this side and next ip let's say 56.152.1122.1 this is my uh, this side okay so one ip i'm giving here this side and one is so those uh, ip we require right so i will draw the topology in next next my video and uh, we'll explain so four switches so as you require six these uh, ips here okay next requirement is ipn switch requirement ipn switch require feature enable so these features should be should be enabled OSPF global setting OSPF process configured on each IPN switches so this process you have to enable like uh, we are saying that we are going to use the IPN uh, one processes so this IP and will be one and the next is the MTU size OSPF interface configuration and MTU we have to configure at both end 9150 so it should be considered and the PIM bidirectional RP interface configuration we have to consider and after that IPN phantom RP configuration also we have to do and the last is the DSCP relay configuration IP address of the port 1 EPIC will be considered as a DSCP server so when we are going to do the configuration at the IPN switches, so this will be part of the configuration. So let's say I have 11.12.0.1, I pick one IP, 12.0.2. So these two will be my DSCP relay, DSCP relay at that time okay so in my next video i will uh, start uh, assigning all those parameters and will tell you how those are going to impact or affect it the multi-board configuration and uh, we will discuss in more detail uh, you know, multi-board hope uh, this is informative to you and uh, clear to you right so i will explain more in my upcoming video so please stay tuned till then goodbye thank you very much